This video is meant to provide an introduction of basic concepts and terminology on electrical machines to support a laboratory on motor testing and model parameter determination. I've summarized a few very common uh, motor types, uh, electric motor types. Uh, if you do, have not had um, or been introduced to these types of machines in, in uh, another course, there are a lot of good introductory books that you can find uh, online and at the library, of course. Um, we're going to be mostly focusing on DC motors. Um, the other types here are, are um, AC motors. Although the universal motor, actually the name implies a, is a type that can be run either by an AC or a DC type source. This is the type of motors that you see very common for, um, let's say, you know, powered blenders, drills. These are single phase type motors often. Um, and uh, as you'll see, we're going to talk about brushed and commutated motors. And uh, universal motors are um, a brushed commutated type motor. As, as are most DC motors. The rest of these are purely AC machines and uh, most common now being the brushless and stepper motors. Um, again, find a good reference if you have interest beyond um, uh, what we'll be doing in this uh, lab, which um, again will focus on a simple permanent magnet DC motor. The schematic here, um, you can find it in a nice little book that introduces electric motors and controls uh, for motors uh, is a book by Kenjo called Electric Motors and Their Controls. Um, this shows the basic configuration of a permanent magnet DC motor. You see these um, quite um, a bit in what we call low power applications. The field um, for these types of motors arises from the permanent magnets that are on the stator. The rotor, which uh, has again all the um, power that's pumped in via the terminals, only one of the terminals is shown here, uh, flows, the electrical current flows through the uh, brushes, contacts mechanically and forms electrical contact with the commutator that provides sort of a switching uh, uh, into the rotor coils, right? And that's what causes the torque on your motor. In, in this type of motor, the field, again, is, is formed by, by the permanent magnets. The rotors are, are typically consist of copper windings. And again, these are brush type motors. Show a picture here of a small um, permanent magnet DC motor uh, we uh, used in the first time we ran this lab. I've removed the gear, the gear head on this motor so you can see the uh, permanent magnets um, attached here to the frame and uh, the number of, coi of coils that we have. The commutator, this is not a great picture, but this is, is attached here. So um, uh, again, this is the part that, that rotates, right? Motor, DC motors are classified um, according to how the field is formed. And so I've just shown here for reference um, uh, a shunt DC motor. Uh, the shunt, the term shunt meaning in parallel, so the field winding here shown on the typical electrical schematic for the armature or, or the rotor um, is, is uh, in shunt or in parallel to, um, to the rotor windings, which are assumed to be on this part here, right? Uh, a series wound machine has the field you know, formed by a series circuit. So you can see you're putting power here into this uh, circuit, but it's it, a series uh, uh, coils are are connected as you see there and then there's a separately excited DC motor that uh, is actually formed by a completely different circuit so you see you need to actually add power separate into the field coils um, from what you put into the armature which you can think of as again the high power the high power uh, transmission again the shaft is not shown on these motor schematics right so um, and again for reference the permanent magnet uh, type DC motor uh, this clearly shows the north and south poles of those magnets to uh, create that field that interacts with the coils as shown there each of these motors has distinct 
torque speed relations. Here it's actually speed plotted speed here if you like n plotted versus torque. Uh, you see each of these has a distinct uh, kind of a unique torque speed relation. Um, and this is your your permanent magnet DC motor. Um, there's your shunt and you can see they have very different types. Look at the torque speed curve for that shunt type motor. Here's your straight series motor. And note this, some of these have distinct advantages. They have, one of the nice things about DC motors is they think of the, the torque is along this line. They have really large, remember this is the speed along here. So you have zero speed right here. So you have high starting torque on these. So each, you know, this table is nice. It shows you some different qualities about each of these. Um, again, the advantage of a permanent magnet DC motor is listed here, meaning you know, one of the nice uh, um, characteristics is you, you don't need to have external power or any power going in to generate your field that's formed by um, the permanent magnets um, attached to the housing. And just a few more points um, related to the commutator. Again, usually constructed of, of uh, coil segments, uh, sorry, of copper segments. And uh, you can see there's insulators between the commutators. And you effectively, the brushes are, you know, contacting, you know, which e each of these to form, to complete the circuit. So you can see this nice drawing from Kendrill's book shows how the commutator might be switching on to, you know, you know, one of these coils in order to generate the torque. Right. So as the rotor is turning, the commutator keeps switching between different connections so that you can continuously have the torque applied onto the rotor. Again, in terms of terminology, the rotor part and the circuit that goes, you know, you can think of you coming onto here and you forming the circuit and, you know, here's the motor terminal connections that you usually think of with a DC motor. That's usually called the armature circuit um, and it's attached to the rotor, the stator being the fixed part or the stationary part. Finally, some benefits, and again, those were listed on that other table, but again, simple construction. Uh, you find these in many devices, and you don't, you, you don't need external power to run them. Uh, you, you, you get permanent magnets to give you the field excitation, and again, you, you'll see them using a the broad uh, range of applications. Some of the drawbacks, again, is that they do have lower, lower power capability. The brushes sometimes aren't desirable. They do cause, they do wear. And uh, for some applications, like in clean rooms and so on, the, these would shed particles, so you wouldn't want brushed motors there. That's why the brushless, the brushless DC motor, which is kind of a misnomer, right? Brushless DC motors are actually AC motors. One of the reasons that they're called, they're called brushless DC is, uh, even though they're AC motors, is that they have a nice um, torque speed characteristic that, at steady state, that looks a lot like the Russia's DC motors. In other words, you get nice high torque, but these do require power electronics to run them, and uh, we'll be talking about those here.